Hey Vikes, I'm Lexi, and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. Jessica went and learned more about the trail edition. Let's go check it out. Hi Vikes, I'm here with Mr. Monahan to talk about the new addition to the trail. So, what is the new addition? Well, it's based the trail. It's been planned for a number of years. But the challenge was funding. And also the original bid came in really, really high. So it just got tabled for many years. So what happened when they were working on the, on the uh, soccer field, I was visiting uh, with the guys from Mammoth Turf, also known as Kansas Turf, about phase two of the trail because they had brought to my attention how active the original trail is. It, they said it's used so much throughout the day. They were really uh, impressed with the amount of use on the trail. So we began some preliminary discussions, and I asked them to take a look at it and give us a bid, which was very reasonable. And so the really, really good news is that because of Mrs. Welch's uh, hard work along with the Wellness Committee over the years and fundraising efforts and 5Ks and grant writing and so forth, that the funds are there. So we were able to go ahead and, and authorize the work, and they're nearly done with the project. Um, so are people still allowed to walk on the trail while everything is going on? Uh, yes, because it's nearly done, except for the south, excuse me, the northeast corner. It has about 100 yards yet to do. And they're going to have to put in a little bit of a culvert because there's some water drainage there. And then, of course, the rain has complicated things for now. But it should be done with the weather cooperating uh, within the next week or two. But people are walking it currently. They just have to walk around on the grass um, for the unfinished part. Um, is there anything you want to say about it? Well, I am just thrilled because I think there's greater access uh, from the North parking lot, for example. People who might be um, dropping their kids off to play tennis or their tennis tournament or track events going on or practices. And, and our parents and kids can uh, walk the trail anytime that they would like. And also, I think it will be really helpful for PE classes on a lot of variety of things might be taking place, they would have the option to walk the trail also. So I think it's going to get a lot of use. And then just a walk across the practice football field would allow them to access phase one of the trail as well. So I think it's, it's really a nice addition. Yeah. Also, I've submitted naming of the trail and I've proposed to the Board of Education and they may consider it this evening and I hope that they do, or it could be tabled until next month, to name the trail after Claudia Welch. Since she's been so uh, influential uh, with both phase one and phase two of the trail, and just all that she's done with Wellman uh, over the years in a leadership role and the grant writing and 5K planning and all those things that she's done, I think it would be quite fitting for phase two of the trail to be named after her. And by the way, when I walked the trail with her recently, it was May 1st, and she told me that 48 years ago, she has um, started working uh, in the Seaford District 48 years ago on May 1st. So I think for all those reasons, it would be really fitting uh, to name the trail after her. Okay, well, that is it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. Now for your daily announcements. Gathering on school grounds or in the parking lot are still not welcomed, so please, stay at home. Seniors, there is a yearbook and exit survey for you to take on your class school due page. Make sure and get that done by the end of the week. Seniors, there is also information about a scholarship opportunity. Check Schoology for more information. If you want to be able to try out for the cheer team for next school year, there will be information on the cheer website or on Schoology. Email Coach Geis with any questions. If you plan on attending prom this summer, there's a registration form on Schoology. North Topeka Rays are ex still accepting applications for the summer season. Check Schoology for more information. 
Now over to Zoe with weather after this quick commercial break. Oh, hey seniors. Normally this time, SVTV is shooting senior thank yous. Don't worry, we're still making senior thank yous, but this year, DIY. If you're interested in making your own video, you can view the link to a tutorial on the Class of 2020 Schoology page or in your own government class. If you'd like to submit your senior thank yous, you can submit it to your government class or email me at airmcgill at usd345students.com. All submissions are due May 15th, and remember, these are for graduation. That's all for me. Make sure to remember, it's always a great day to be a Viking. What's up guys? It's your guy Elias Mosier here and hey, I got a great product for you. It's called SVTV Live Streaming, okay? We want to get this done so we can see all those sports like, go touchdown bowl, man. Like, get a strike, my dude, in golf. Like, you know, these great sports. If you want to see them live, all you got to do is go down and hit that subscribe button. Just smash that subscribe button, guys. Don't forget to turn on that bell notification and like the video. Thanks, guy. See you later. Good afternoon, Vikings. As you can see, it's quite dreary outside this morning, and that's because we are expecting quite a bit of rain this afternoon. We'll talk more about the rain in one minute. We are seeing a huge warm-up coming in our area before long with our temperatures reaching up into the 80s. For your SVTV 7-day forecast, like I said earlier, we are seeing rain for this whole week. Not one chance that we can go outside really and enjoy the nice weather. And our temperatures will continue to battle to stay towards the 80s area for the rest of this weekend. Now back to your anchors. Thanks, Zoe. Joey has a story on NBA. Let's go check it out. 11th, 2020, Utah Jazz's starting center, Rudy Gobert, tested positive for the coronavirus. We have been in quarantine for about two months now. Now, the NBA has informed its 30 teams that practice facilities can open May 8th if the market is no longer subject to restrictions. Also, no more than four players would be permitted at a facility at any one time. No head or assistant coaches could participate. The NBA Players Association Executive Director Michelle Roberts and NBA Commissioner Adam Silver will hold a call for all players on Friday, May 8th. So far, only the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Portland Trailblazers were the only two clubs to unlock their practice facilities Friday, reflecting the cautious approach many franchises and players adopted on the first day that roughly half of the NBA's 30 teams had clearance to reopen after a shutdown of nearly two months. Now, back to your anchors. That's all we have for today, Vikes. Enjoy the rest of your day.